This is an excerpt from Renard. As if in his dream again, Darius closed the book, held it against his chest, and walked out of the room, across the atrium, and out the front door. It felt like he was watching himself. He knew what he was about to do, knew he should not, yet he also knew he would do it no matter what. One of the stone-walled buildings near the burned barn, the side tumbled down, looked like it would work. He still held the book to his chest, that hungry thing gnawing inside him, anticipating what he was about to do. Our Alion, as Alion, Darius called the magic, light and dark both. His blood was hot with it. He could feel it in every vein. That hunger ate the magic, but it was unsated by it. He called more magic, pulling it out of the ground, from the sky, from the sun itself, his fingers drawing sigma on the air, sending them into the stones of the building. The feeling was like having a buzz just before getting too drunk to have a good time, like the adrenaline of winning a horse race, the relief of surviving another battle, all rolled into one. He thought the sun dimmed, but all he could see was magic swirling around him, crimson and black, silver and gold. He wove the final sigma in the air, a spell of binding and building, and pushed it out. He opened his mouth to say the closing words, but all that escaped him was an inarticulate sound, taking his breath, taking his voice with the magic. The magic rushed away from him, left him like a glass knocked over on the table, its contents spilling out. Shaking, he fell to his knees, stopping himself from falling on his face with one hand, still clutching the notebook to his chest. The stone building changed under the fingers of his spell, the magic reshaping the stones, fitting them perfectly to each other. Exhaustion like he had never felt washed over him and his arm gave out. Darkness covered him. A warm, soft muzzle pressed against his cheek, nudging him. Darius opened one eye, and his field of vision was full of short, black fur and a large, soft brown eye. Zion blew hot air on his face before taking a mouthful of grass from beside his nose, dropping stems on his face in his hair. Darius squinted his eyes shut and pushed himself up. Nausea washed over him, and he stopped on his hands, staring at the ground, at the notebook under his chest. Moving slowly, he righted himself, pulled the notebook to his chest, and looked at what he had created. The tomb was small, but it would be large enough for those that were left in the house. The feeling of being disconnected was gone, as if burning all that magic through his veins had rooted him back in reality. The sun had passed mid-afternoon and was falling towards the western horizon, casting a long shadow from his work, like it was stretching out to touch him. That feeling of being watched crawled over his skin again. Zion spun, snorting out a warning, his black hose beating against the ground as he circled Darius, looking to the south, his sharply curved ears perked, his nostrils flared. Darius stood up, put the book into his belt, and called Zion to him. He laid a hand on the crest of Zion's neck, trying to see what the stallion was seeing. It was not his imagination, but his eyes were not as good as his horse's and he could not find what had raised the alarm. They stood there, the stallion perfectly still under his hand, and looked out to the south. Finally, Zion lowered his head and turned to Darius, nudging his chest. Darius knew, now, that he was being watched by someone that could go anywhere he went. The thought of laying in the field, unconscious and vulnerable, and someone watching him, felt like a cold hand had squeezed his chest. He looked back at the tomb, and that feeling faded. The perfect arch, the stones manipulated with magic to make flawless joints. Works of magical architecture, even small ones, were unheard of now. It just took too much power. Power he had access to. He could change the world with that power.